Hi everyone, how's it going? Um, I wanted to share with you some thoughts. Um, I hope that you're having a great Christmas season and uh, these are some things I've been thinking about that maybe you can add to uh, your testimony, maybe add to your study. Um, so I'm in Jacob chapter 4 in the Book of Mormon. And Jacob starts off the chapter and he says that um, that they're writing on the plates um, the things that are most important to them because it's so difficult to write on the plates. But they know if they don't write it down that it's going to get lost. It's going to get perverted or it's going to just vanish. And uh, so he said that they don't want that to happen and they don't want their knowledge of the things they know about Jesus Christ to perish, to vanish away. And so they're writing it down on these words, on the plates. And he does it for his children, and he does it for his brethren. And um, I was thinking about that. Like, what would be the thing that I'd want to tell my kids that was most important to me? And I had a very real experience with this with my dad when he um, died when um, me and my brothers were children, younger. And uh, he was worried. He was really worried about... Uh, leaving some kind of memory of him, some kind of legacy. Uh, we had a, a conversation with him during a family home evening where he said that his his grandfather gave him like um, a pocket knife, I think, um, and he wished he still had that or had something that he could pass on like through the generation, um, through us, through the next kids to, to, to remember him. And basically to remember how much he loved us. Like, that's what he wanted us to remember, is how much he loved us. And what he doesn't understand, probably at that time, is that he did leave us something. Um, he, he gave us a testimony, and we wrote it down. And he wrote down his testimony for us kids of what was most important to him. And then he died soon after. So... For him, that was actually what was most important because he didn't keep any little trinkets. It wasn't like his grandmother's blanket that was passed down or his grandfather's pocket watch. He passed us his testimony and that was super strong. And that's what Jacob is saying, is that he wanted to pass something to his children. He didn't, he didn't say necessarily Jacob. Now Nephi said that he was commanded to write it, but Jacob at this point in time isn't saying, Oh, I'm writing this down because God told me to. No, he had a desire to write it down because he wanted his children to know. And um, he also had the love of God, charity for all men. So he also includes his brethren with that, which is also very, very sweet. But um, So what is it? What was it most important to Jacob that he uh, wanted his children to know um, and to be preserved, to not perish, to not vanish, to not vanquish. Um, now, read the whole chapter. It's very important, but I'm going to skip. Um, and he talks about, in verse um, 4, he talked about that they know who Christ is. They know Christ. They also have a testimony that the prophets before them also knew Christ. That the Old Testament is talking about Jesus Christ. It's not some random um, Messiah. It is the Messiah, the one and only Jesus Christ. He also makes, um, makes it clear that they believe in Jesus Christ and worship the Father. And that is very clear for us members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That we love and worship Jesus Christ... But Jesus Christ gives all that worshiping, all that glory to God, the Father. And and in order to for us to practice, I guess, worshiping the Father, because our relationships with the Savior, we pray to the Father. We pray to the Father. We don't pray to Jesus Christ. So we are worshiping 
the Father. If we are doing our prayers correctly, not like what um, President Nelson said in his um, general conference talks, don't have it be a shopping list, but if we're truly praying to our Father, it is a form of worshiping Him, to acknowledge Him, who He is, and His plan, and His wisdom, His knowledge, Him being the Creator. And um, and any time that we um, worship Jesus Christ, which Heavenly Father is okay with, because Jesus Christ is perfect, and Jesus Christ gives it back to Him, the glory. Um, anytime we worship Jesus Christ, um, because they're one, um, it is also worshiping God, the Father. And so it's very um, important to Jacob that his kids know this, that Jesus Christ is real, that he is real, and he is part of the plan. He is the plan. He is what makes us happy because he is what allows us to get back to our Father, Heavenly Father, who we worship, who we want to be with. Um, just as much as I wanted my dad to stay here on earth and not die, we need to have a desire that we want to be with our Father. We want to be with Heavenly Father. And Jacob knew this, and he he put it down on the plates, which was difficult to write on. So that was important to him. Um, he also, um, talked about how that it is only through, um, Jesus Christ, through his, um, he calls it his great condescensions unto the children of men. So when he's condescending, it means he's coming from the holier place, from heaven, uh, from paradise, from the celestial kingdom. He's coming down to us because we can't make it there without him. So he's going to come to us to to help lift us up. So we're not pulling him down. He's coming willfully to to raise us up to Heavenly Father. And because of this, we can know the great and marvelous works of the Lord. We can know these marvelous things, the mysteries of him, and um, that we should know that um, no man can know of his ways, save it be revealed unto him. So we can know it through personal revelation, through the revelations as a collective church given to the prophet. Um, and therefore, despise not the revelations of God. So don't, I'm just going to leave it like that. Don't despise the revelations of God, okay? Now, I'm going to take that one step further. In verse 12, he says, And now, beloved, marvel not that I tell you these things, for why not speak of the atonement of Christ and attain to a perfect knowledge of him as to attain to the knowledge of the resurrection and the world to come? So, Jacob spent his time saying there is a Jesus Christ, there is God the Father, and the plan is Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk about him. We are going to talk about him. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? That's what Jacob says. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we talk about him? Um, and I'm going to talk to him so we know who he is. We know of his, his um, mission. And uh, we also know about his resurrection and the world to come. There's something else. There's something else. It is not just, yay, we repented, and we got baptized, and we got baptized by water and by fire, received the Holy Ghost, and now we're going to get resurrected. There's something else. There's something more. The world to come, the celestial kingdom. There's something that is greater than our comprehension. Those are the mysteries that are going to be revealed, is what we're going to be learning in the celestial kingdom plus the joy that we're going to have in the celestial kingdom. And then, directly after that verse, that was verse 12. Why aren't we talking about Christ? Of course we would talk about Christ, and I'm going to talk about Christ. I'm going to talk about his atonement. I'm going to talk about his perfect knowledge um, of, of fulfilling God's plan, of doing God's plan, and the resurrection and the world to come. So, 
enduring to the end, world to come, something else coming, okay? Right after, in verse 13, he says, Behold my brother, and he that prophesieth, let him prophesy to the understanding of men, for the Spirit speaketh the truth and lieth not. So, what is truth? He says, Wherefore, it speaketh, meaning the Spirit, who only speaks truth, it speaketh of things as they really are and of things as they really will be. Wherefore, these things are manifested unto us plainly for the salvation of our souls. So what are the plain things that, that we have to talk about? The plain things. The plain thing is Jesus Christ. That's it. The plain things. And and Satan will try to destroy that. That plain and precious truth, right? We hear that in the Book of Mormon. The plain and precious things. The plain and precious truth. The plain and precious truth that the Spirit can only talk about is Jesus Christ. And in this world where people are saying, you are enough. You're good as you are. You're great. Nobody can tell you otherwise. Are you special? Yes. Are you divine? Yes. Are you enough on your own? No. Sorry to tell you, you're not. You're not enough on your own. You have to have Jesus Christ. He's the truth. He's the plain and precious thing. And like Jacob said, why wouldn't we talk about him? He makes us happier, and he's the one that gets us to our Father. And um, I just hope that in this Christmas season, when we think more, I mean, hopefully we're always thinking about Jesus Christ, but for much of the world, he only enters in in such a magnanimous way at Christmas time. Um, but I hope that we think about Jesus Christ and know that he is the plain thing. Any of the scriptures that don't talk about him um, were blinded by something. Um, either they were translated incorrectly or we, um, in our imperfect way, can't see it yet because we're learning line upon line. Any worldly view, any um, academic view, politic, political, political view, <laughs> uh, any... Any view, religious view, uh, family view, any view that does not say the plain and precious thing, that Jesus Christ is real, that he lives, and that it is by him, through him, and because of him that we get to our Father, which has all the mysteries and marvels that we want, um, they're missing the mark. They're off the beaten path. It's not okay. And, and that is what Jacob wanted to, his children to know. That if, if there's one thing you learn, you learn the name Jesus Christ. And, and that's what I would like to leave with my kids. And, and when we think about Christmas, let's make sure that we don't, we don't miss the plain and precious thing, which is Jesus Christ. Um, and... Um, that's my two cents. <laughs> it's from Amber. But this my testimony that I received from the scripture, that Jesus Christ is our foundation. He is the center of our very existence. And we need to remember that. And um, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.